When I first started in television, we wouldn't have had any record except maybe some photographs, but there was no recording apparatus around, and all the early shows weren't recorded, but I was very lucky. In show business, we found a man who was able to take photographs of a television show from his own television set. He had a mechanized camera with a tube running from it and a rubber bulb and every time he squeezed the bulb the camera would take a photograph and he could take up to 90 in about a 10 minute slot it was wonderful but unfortunately the photographs that he took came out in a very small size a bit like a stem in strips and then you could look at them and pick out the better ones and order them for an enlargement of two and a half inches by two. Well, that was very helpful and you could even get them enlarged to three inches by four inches. And I am very lucky that my early shows were all recorded by this man. His name, by the way, was John Cuber. He was well known to the show business fraternity. And I had some samples that I've kept, otherwise I wouldn't have any record of these shows. As you can see, I've got some little index boxes where I kept a record of all the shows. Uh, this one is from 1953 to 1957, and this one is from 1958 to 66. There is one other box because I recorded approximately 60 different television shows. I kept them in little envelopes like this, so you can see that they're all labelled. So if I just uh, pick one up at random. These shows are mostly variety shows. In those days, most personalities and comedians particularly had their own television shows. This is BBC Television. People like Charlie Chester, Benny Hill, Ted Ray, Max Wall. Bob Marcus, Terry Thomas, Norman Whitton, I could go on and on. And I appeared as a guest on most of these shows. And inside these envelopes are these small strips of the telly snaps. Let me show you some enlargements. Here, for instance, are some of the enlargements to two and a half inches by two, and then you could get them enlarged to three by four inches, which is very useful because now you can actually see them. This, for instance, is a, a show with Bob Monkhouse and myself. Occasionally, my wife Ruth would help me on these shows. In this particular occasion, she was holding a dove that I just produced. I then took it off her, put it on my finger and stroked it gently. And suddenly I turned the dove over, I passed my hand in a mysterious way over it and it lay completely still upside down in my hand. People wondered how that would happen or whether I had hurt it in any way. And then I smiled and with a flick of my fingers the dove jumped back and was perfectly unharmed. In those days, there was a craze about DIY, that's do it yourself. So I built one of my favorite routines around it. I asked for three volunteers and dressed them in carpenter's overalls. One was given a long plank and a saw. The other one was given a block of wood, some hammer and nails, and the third one also a piece of wood, but with an electric drill. And when the music starts, they start sewing, drilling and hammering. In front of the table is a small case that looks like a first aid kit. In actual fact, it's not. Inside it is a piece of wood that I placed there before we started. And just to give you an idea of the sort of atmosphere we created, here's a short excerpt of a radio show with the same routine. Uh, just before we start, I'd like to just point out that on the table in front of them, I have a very long, narrow, mysterious looking box and I won't tell you what's in that just for the moment but Paul may have a little music when I tell you we'll start in three seconds from now one two three
I think they did very well, and uh, I asked them before we started whether they really consider themselves to be handymen, and I think they've proved their point. They certainly have. Well, that's wonderful. Now, I'd uh, like to ask you a question. You've just thrown on that piece of wood, if you <laughs> so come to bits. If you can just uh, pick it up, please. Here's a tape measure. Would you please measure the exact length that you've actually measured? I should measure it from there to, to there. And uh, will you please count the number of nails that you've knocked in, and will you count the number of holes that you've drilled, please? Uh, unless you kept tag them. Here we have this long, mysterious piece of uh, box inside which I have a piece of wood. And I'd like you to tell me now, Mr. Rich, first gentleman, how many inches have you sewn off, please? Seventeen and a half inches. Seventeen and a half inches. Well, you couldn't have possibly known that before you came on the stage tonight. You didn't even know you were coming up. Nobody could have known what he was going to sew off. Now, would you please measure the piece of wood which I've just taken out of this box? Just measure it, please, quickly. And how many inches is that? Seventeen and a half. Needless to say, David got the other predictions spot on as well. On the other side of that piece of wood are some nails. They happen to match the exact number of nails that the man had knocked into the, his piece of wood. And finally, when it's turned around again, they find there are some holes there which also match the number of holes that the man with the drill had drilled. Well, there you have it. What a long way we've come since the early days. No way of recording. Then we had telesnaps. And of course, after that, VHSs, Betamax, laser discs, DVDs, and now everything is on a memory stick. Well, not even this big. I now have a small memory stick like that. Would you believe that all my recordings on there well, you don't have to believe it because I've gone even smaller. All my early shows are on this memory stick, and this memory stick is so small that if I squeeze it, it goes because you don't need anything more. Everything's up here as a memory.